This is the American Dragon, Daniel Bryanson, the best wrestler in the world. And you're watching the best wrestling talk show in the world, The Wrestling Roundtable. Welcome back to The Wrestling Roundtable. If we didn't mention something and you're upset about it, leave a comment or listen to us on blogtalkradio.com. The number to call, 347-857-4647 on Tuesday nights after NXT, which is on the internet now. And we'll follow up on some of these topics and some more stuff that we didn't fit into the time restrictions here. So expanded talk on Wrestling Roundtable Radio and all the latest goings on in mixed martial arts and pro wrestling. Sitting to my right, returning to the panel for the first time this season, Brett Midge Simonello. He's a fan of 24 years, an elementary school teacher in the scariest credential I've ever heard. He's also apparently the son of Bob Orton or Owen Hart, whatever. Yeah. What happened to your arm? <laughs> well, I was walking around the Respect locker room, and long story short, don't walk past Bobby Dempsey with a chocolate bar. <laughs> Won't turn out well. <laughs> yes, Midge, also the backstage interview and commentator, along with myself, and Bill Berger for Pro Wrestling Respect DVDs, which you can get on WrestlingRoundTable.com. That guy's weird. This is a production, people. Support the show. So, best makeovers. This could either be something as little as a haircut, getting someone's head shaved or whatever, or a complete gimmick overhaul. So in that range of change, what fits into your opinion, Brett, as the best makeover in wrestling? Well, I'm going to go straight to the top for the number one best makeover in wrestling, Farouk. After he was the gladiator... I'm talking, he was already in there, Sonny already brought him in. He He's already the, had a makeover to become that gladiator. Well, we're in the remaking first place. him over from the gladiator to the black, black militia. Yeah. 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 That was, that's mind. my best one. It goes from a cartoon character to a legit badass. Mm -hmm. That's mine. Very gradual makeover, but it's very effective. Hunter Hearst Helmsley, the retro regal wrestler from Connecticut. You don't know how I wish he would still talk <laughs> like that. Randy it's Orton. that game, but I'm not going to put you over WrestleMania. <laughs> this very effective change. The Triple H character worked very well, still does. The entrance, music, the whole gimmick. It's just one of the most over characters. Just say it, Rodney. In 2000, there was no one better in wrestling, maybe in the world, than Triple H. He was really hitting his stride. The was game character was great. He was having great matches. It really finally worked after about a year of trying. Owen Hart. Going from that really crappy tag team, High Energy, with Coco Beware. Well, let's not forget the Blue Blazer before high that. Energy. There's nothing wrong with hammer pants. Hmm. Redone as White Hart's angry, jealous little brother. Mm -hmm. That was great. That led up to a lot of great matches, a great feud for a while. And it was his character for the next, like, four years. Until the Hart Foundation reformed and became more of a, uh, he wasn't jealous little brother anymore. He was like, oh, Brett, oh, I'm your biggest fan. Oh, hmm. I am shocked that Hollywood Hogan has not been mentioned yet, so I will mention it. The biggest name in wrestling, who had been a babyface, red and yellow, clean cut for over a decade, now all of a sudden becomes the biggest heel in wrestling and does such a tremendous job at it. Just the color change, the style change, the attitude change. Yeah. It was absolutely perfect. And I think WCW... And it happened with a snap of a finger, too. Mm -hmm. oh, one leg drop. <laughs> and I think WCW is going to become a pattern here because I think they did really well with makeovers when they needed to in this time period in the Monday Night War because the obvious complement to that, the parallel, is Sting. Sting had always been essentially their equivalent of Hogan. The surfer from Venice Beach with the blonde hair, baby face, top of the company... Well, Sting was going through a transformation, too, and it really reflected the time period of the anti-hero in a way, which, of course, Steve Austin would ride into success. But Sting became one of the biggest draws that wasn't the NWO during this time period by becoming essentially what Skull Hall said, the crow. Hey, why don't you do the crow? And the way they got that character over, not saying a word, not wrestling, to accomplish A, giving Sting time off, and B, still getting him the most over that he's ever been, Amazing accomplishment, especially with this whole idea that you need to be able to talk to be a big star. Sting got more over than anybody in the company at the time by not saying a word. Typhoon from Tugboat. <laughs> I mean, you go from okay. Okay. to okay. the Natural Disaster is one of my favorite tag teams growing up. He aligned himself with Earthquake and Jimmy Hart. No internet, no surprise. It was a surprise, so right. it was cool. I'm sure our audience will be upset if we don't mention The Undertaker at some point during this. There's been so many. And that is a great way to keep someone fresh. Not just cosmetic, but as you mentioned before, the underbiker in the many different stages that had as well. Yeah, yeah. So many the different haircut, the heel turn. So many different looks, entrance themes, whatever has gone through this guy's repertoire in the Fish past mask. twenty yeah. years. 
Good or bad, it's kept the Undertaker fresh and kept him going, and he's obviously stayed in great shape too. Scott Steiner, mm -hmm. Big Papa Pump, right? The All American Michigan wrestler, and he cuts his hair. He takes his body and uses it as his, his gimmick, which he really never mentioned before. And another one I want to mention. Whoa, 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 whoa! Before we go off Scott Steiner, it may have been the millionth take of someone ripping off superstar Billy Graham, but. Give Scott Steiner a microphone, and holy shit. It surprised me. You never knew, never knew all these years this guy had it in him. Mm -hmm. Another guy that you never knew had it in him, Stone Cold Steve Austin. We went from the Hollywood Blondes, the ringmaster, shaved his head, grew his goatee, and then... Do I need to say any more? You the skipped over an important ECW part. Yeah, we saw hints oh, of it in ECW. ECW. But the cosmetic change in right. WWF, that's what really took that ECW character with anything else that WWF introduced or threw at him, and he ran with it. But speaking of ECW, what about Raven? <laughs> what about Raven? <laughs> Guy who had had a career of Johnny Polo and Scotty Flamingo. When I was before the internet reading Pro Wrestling Illustrated and I would see this Raven guy, I didn't even know it was him. And what an amazing character that he obviously knew what he wanted to do with it. And that carried over from the few years he was in ECW to WCW as well. And he took the character to new levels. And unfortunately, as much like The Undertaker, it's gone through a lot of different transformations over the years. Head shaved, cornrows, whatever. A lot of different good incarnations of it. Now I'm sick of him. Taz. Going from the Tasmaniac yeah. to become the ultimate fighter. Really? Taz. Yeah. Loves him. He was the, he's one of the only guys I've ever truly marked out to believe that his gimmick completely. I mm -hmm. truly believe Taz was the most badass motherfucker on the planet. He, he made you believe that. He, he did. He, I never thought he could lose. When he he's lost to Bam Bam, like after three years of the gimmick, I was shocked. I didn't think he could. I didn't think anybody could ever beat him. But he beat him clean. Well, kind of clean. Went through the ring. I believed his gimmick one hundred percent and. That was a key part to his character, I think, the, the believability of it. Mm -hmm. But someone we mentioned earlier, before we wrap it up here, that definitely deserves to be mentioned is Goldust. Because this is a guy who had been wrestling a long time as Dustin Rhodes, Dusty Rhodes' son. And Dusty Rhodes, one of the most famous wrestlers ever in his time. So, of course, much like a lot of, not all, but a lot of second-generation wrestlers, they get lost in the shadow and the spotlight of their father. And I don't think Dustin Rhodes ever particularly broke out of that. He was always kind of like just... A dusty bland, son, dusty, yeah. without the, the goofiness, I guess, and the charisma. But when he came back to WWF in 95, again, I didn't even recognize him at first. What a complete overhaul. Deep character, a lot of different ways that it, it, it came at you with the background, the movies, the homosexuality that they brought into it, which was new also. The and look, the, attitude the entrance, everything was completely different, and it was a very good makeover. Some weren't so good, and that's what we're going to move on to next when we get to the worst makeovers. Parking, hauling, getting all sticky, forget all that. Our fast, all-natural spray tan gives you a superior UV-free tan from a certified technician. The most trusted name in indoor tanning, Extreme Tan and Smoothies. Okay, I have a good one. I, th I think I do too. That's what she said. Not to you. Not to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Susan. Okay. Welcome back to the Wrestling Roundtable. Want to stay up to date on the Wrestling Roundtable and stop leaving us YouTube messages about when the next show is? Sign up for the newsletter. Go to WrestlingRoundtable.com and check the news. Or go to our message board. Stay up to date on WrestlingRoundtable.com because you can also join us on MySpace, Facebook, iTunes, Go Fight Live, and Twitter. Everything Wrestling Roundtable at WrestlingRoundtable.com. Now, moving on to the worst makeovers. One thing I wanted to throw in at the beginning, because one of the ones that occurred to me was Nigel McGuinness. In 2009, he shaved off his pointy hair that he used to tweak at the beginning of every show. And I didn't understand it because this was something that was a unique look for just him on t-shirts and everything, logos. Why would you want to shave off that and just become just another plain looking wrestler, I guess? I mean, he had personality to make up for it, but I just, I'm a detail guy. So if it's Rhett Titus losing the bow tie, what's the point of that? Nigel McGinnis shaving his head. I didn't particularly care for those sort of things. So before we get into the proper discussion, I wanted to throw that out there because a lot of time these makeovers are a match stipulation. Someone loses a mask, gets their hair cut. People tell me all the time, you fucking trolls on the internet to cut my hair. Ain't gonna happen. <laughs> it's too nice. Too but let's nice. talk about some of the ones that did happen. What stood out for you for someone losing their hair or getting it cut? 
Kevin Nash, I think, was the worst. That was why because it was obvious. Oh, I'm gonna go make the Punisher movie. Yeah. I'll bleach my hair ultra blonde the day of. <laughs> oh, it was just really bad. He's kind of made up for it recently because I really dig the long gray look. Gray, he yeah. looks like a big. He looks very distinguished, almost like a college professor these days. He should come out with a tweed <laughs> jacket on and a pipe. I was thinking of a wizard, <laughs> but that's good enough. One of the ones I hated was Kane. It made it look like he had fake hair the whole time. Which, of course, he is did. a big break you know, in continuity. But it was more surprising because he had like one little ponytail at the end, too, which was kind of weird. Well, whatever it was, it was just a bad idea, yeah. I think. I still, seven years later, do not like the idea of him losing the mask no. because with his outfit over the years, and if you didn't hear my backstory of the Kane Undertaker feud, you should be listening to blogtalkradio.com slash wrestling roundtable. One of the things I didn't like about the Kane characters, they kept stripping away, and I guess this would be worse makeovers, but they kept stripping away at the character little bit by little bit he's supposed to be burned oh but not that arm oh but not his chin oh but not this and eventually it just got to the point where he is now where there's absolutely nothing that looks the same like it did years ago and i just never liked the idea of him losing the mask no that's like taking off Rey mysterio's mask it's just not needed it's just like it, the character does not match if you take all that stuff off it just kills everything about him cm punk when he got his hair cut like recently, and he put the mask on and looked like delirious for two months. I mm. really didn't like it. I didn't. Yep. I didn't see the point. Well, it did yeah, have the big payoff when Big Show finally took it yeah. off. No, and yeah, he's yeah. embarrassed because oh, yeah. everyone knows what he looks like, but yeah. he's acting like no, that's he's why, never had. He's always yeah. had a mask on for ten years. Yeah, I mean, that's sense. why I liked it. That's I mean, why it worked. That's yeah. why it worked yeah. to me. With all these head shavings, and I think Andre the Giant, when the Heenan family got to him in 85 and got that ridiculous fro out of the way, was a good look. But a lot of these guys, like Kurt Angle, losing to Edge in 02, Chris Daniels, Claudio, guys who were going bald and end up going for the Steve Austin look. It just seemed as if there was a period in wrestling where everyone was going for the shaved head look. A lot of these guys it did work for, though. However, one I don't think it did for was Vince McMahon. Because that wonderful hair he had for all those decades has never looked the same. It's never looked quite as good. Although that do-rag look in the ECW feud, <laughs> ripping me off, yeah, I did enjoy it. I that. was just disappointed uh, to find out it wasn't a toupee after all those years of Jerry Lawler jokes. Let's get back into the worst makeovers proper and get off all this hair talk specifically. What were some of the worst makeovers, Chris? It, it was said before, Rey Mysterio. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God, what a disaster. P taking that mask off in WCW, he looks like a 10-year-old child. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was awful. Well, not just that, but he also got that thug look with yeah. the giant camouflage. Yeah. It just mm -hmm. didn't work Filthy at all. Filthy animal. It, it was just a bad gimmick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Although the horns were pretty cool in the Filthy Animals. One thing I did not like, which killed someone's character we had for 20 years, was Jim Duggan's Canadian look. That was just horrible. <laughs> horrible idea. I know they're trying to do something with Lance Storm. I mean, he was really keeping that going, but man, Jim Duggan turning Kane, you know that's no. not him. You know, there's no way you could see that. It isn't, but there was one enjoyable thing about that when he would yell at Major Guns, shut up, woman! <laughs> <laughs> the giant machine. Speaking Andre, of Andre. Andre the giant in a mask. And they try to hide him. Mm -hmm. You couldn't hide Andre in a phone booth. Well, I, I <laughs> well, the whole thing, like Mr. America and the Midnight Rider, was supposed to be, we know it's him. Yeah. Hint, hint. Yeah. But speaking of big men in WWF, what about Dusty Rhodes in 89? Mm. You take one of the biggest wrestling names ever. Just forget that ever happened. To Dusty's credit, he made this ridiculous look with the polka dots, which was everything that we have tried doing with him was a big goof on him. Between Virgil, Akeem, the look, they just mm -hmm. tried fucking with this guy nonstop. And to his credit, he got it over. Mm -hmm. yeah. The new Midnight Express. Uh, Bombastic, fart gun, and bodacious Bob Holly. Whichever. Jim Cornette that. doesn't even remember which one it was. <laughs> no. he, he, screwed up, he screwed up live. That was hilarious. Yeah, speaking of tag teams, uh, one that went from a tag to a single, that's Chaz. That's the one thing Ooh. I never liked yeah. at all. I don't get the character. That's the problem. Whatever that Cleaver character was. So. Beaver Cleaver. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. Beaver Cleavage I don't get that at all. As opposed to Umaga, who did, I guess, a reverse Mysterio and went from the three-minute warning look to the Umaga look, mm -hmm. acting like a savage is really fucking classy and not racist at all in the new millennium, but the look was cool in the traditional yeah. cultural sense, but people didn't like it when Samoa Joe went for that. When he went from the Samoan submission machine to the penis face. Is well, the problem is you, you kind of overhauled the character. He wasn't wearing the same clothes. He's coming to the same music. 
And you got a guy who went completely different. Like, mm-hmm. if you put him next to each other, you couldn't even really tell because it looks so different. Because yeah. he had all the tattoos. He had the Jamal was also ring. gone for a couple of yeah, years. Yeah, he was gone between. for a while, too. You know, so. Well, we're going to be gone for a little while because that wraps it up for this week on Wrestling Roundtable. Join us next week, our season finale. We're going to be talking about the WWF's new generation and also having the submission round for Q&A. So join us on WrestlingRoundtable.com. Like I've mentioned many times, keep supporting the show. So for the panel of Brett Simonello, Midge, Chris Harris, Rodney LeCant, Will Vafidez, Will Brooks, I'm the host, Eric Santa Maria. Thank you and join us next week.